welcome back. We have already studied about tissue. A tissue is collection of cells that perform functions that are related and are also similar in structure. The four primary tissue are epithelial, connective, muscular and nervous. Epithelial tissue we have already discussed. So, now we will be discussing about connective tissue. Connective tissue is a basic tissue. It gives support to other tissues. Since it is connecting, so it is known as connective tissue. Connective tissue is made up of cells, fibers and ground substance. Connective tissue, these are mesodermal in origin. So, connective tissue, fibers, cells and ground substance. Cells are fixed cells and wandering cells. The fixed cells are fibroblast, adipose cells, mesenchymal cells and pigment cells. Wandering cells are like macrophages, plasma cells, mast cells and WBCs. Fixed cells, fibroblast. So, fibroblast, these are actually responsible for production of extracellular components that is fibers and the ground substance. So, if you see the cell, it is like a stem cell, it has got a large nuclei. In resting phase, these cells appear spindle shaped and they have got tapering ends and then they are known as fibrocyte and fibroblasts are active cells. They are usually active during wound healing. The nucleus of the fibroblast stains lightly. So, these are the cells which are found in all the types of connective tissue. Function again I will repeat they are responsible for production of extracellular components and fibers and ground substance. Adipose cells, adipose cells also known as fat cells function it synthesizes and stores fat. If you can see here there is a fibroblast like precursor the fat droplets start accumulating and then it appears as one single fat droplet pushing the cytoplasm to the periphery and pushing the nucleus. When it is stained in HNE, normally what we stain, the fat is dissolved during the process and only the thin layer of cytoplasm gets stained and the nucleus is seen and so it gives us appearance of a signet ring and it looks empty that is because the fat is dissolved. Special stain such as Sudan 3 is used for fat. Mesenchymal cells. Mesenchymal means these are the cells which are deri derived from the mesenchyme that is fetal supporting tissue. They are star shaped and they actually can transform into whatever cell required depending upon the proper stimulus. They are smaller than fibroblast, but the staining and appearance is like fibroblast but they can form and change any cell which is required. Pigment cells as we know pigment cells which is having pigment. These are stellate cells they have got branching process. The cytoplasm contains pigment granules mostly melanin. Uh, these cells are of neural crest origin. These cells are present in the skin, UVL tract, so they protect the tissue against harmful effects of the UV rays. Wandering cells now, in wandering cells macrophage, phage is to eat, so the function of macrophages is phagoc phagocytose, eat or digest the bacteria and the foreign bodies present, damaged tissue, dead, dead tissue, so it is just 
eating it. They may be fusiform in shape, stellate in shape or spheroid. Nucleus is slightly smaller but darkly stained. These cells are also more in seen in uh, connective tissue. Plasma cells. Function of this is to manufacture antibodies against antigens. So, thus they are imparting resistance to the body against the disease. The cells are ovoid in shape, they have a nucleus which is eccentric that is on one side and the chromatin in the nucleus is arranged in a radial pattern. So, it gives it a cartwheel appearance can be asked in MCQ. The plasma cell nucleus it gives a appearance of a cartwheel. Mast cells. Mast cells these cells are found along the small blood vessels they have got granules in it and these granules contain histamine which is a vasodilator and heparin which is an anticoagulant. These cells do look like the blood basophils. The cytoplasm is packed with granules. seen along the blood vessel. Granules contain histamine and heparin. White blood cells, white blood cells are lymphocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils. Function is they carry the antibodies and the phagocytos and phagocytos the bacteria etcetera. Okay, here if you can see the nucleus of the neutrophil, they have 3 to 5 lobes. Eosinophils associated with allergic reactions and basophils are responsible for anaphylaxis. Okay. Then we come to fibers. Fibers are of 3 types, collagen fibers, elastic fibers and reticular fibers. Collagen fibers. Collagen fibers, these are seen in all the type of connective tissues. When they are not stained or unstained, they usually look colorless. They are made up of fibrils, they run in various bundles. Collagen fibers are synthesized by fibroblast made up of protein called collagen, and when stained with HNE, they stain pink. According to the chemical composition, collagen fibers are grade, classified into four grades. Grade 1 is the thickest fiber seen in bone and connective tissue. Grade 2 is seen in hyaline cartilage. Grade 3 is reticular fibers, they are supporting uh, and they form a meshwork. Reticular is a network or meshwork. Grade 4 are thin fibers present in basement membrane, they do not form bundles. Grade 7, they are they are actually form special anchoring fibrils. Okay. Uh, actually, there are 28 types of collagen fibers which some books have mentioned, but we will be interested only in these types 1, 2, 4 and 7. 7, these are all 7 is less likely asked anywhere, but can be asked as a MCQ. Elastic fibers, elastic fibers they are found in ligaments. So, ligament of nuke, ligament of flave, flavum, anywhere these are seen mostly that is the ligaments. Elastic means once they cut they recoil back. These fibers are yellow in color. Protein present is elastin. They are highly resistant to boiling as well as dilute acid alkalis. Whereas, collagen it swells when it is boiled. Elastic fibers they run singly and they branch. So, again fibers are actually color uh, yellow or sometimes they appear colorless, but with HNE they appear pink. Special stain is Verhoff stain. 
an abnormality genetic disorder due to abnormal development of elastic fibers is Marfan syndrome. Then reticular fibers, these are again fine branching fibers, they actually form a supporting framework. These fibers are delicate, but they form a network always reticular fiber and we have already seen they are grade 4 collagen fibers. These fibers cannot be seen with HNE stain, silver staining method, these are the best method to stain a reticular fiber and they will stain the fiber black. So, if you can see here collagen fiber, elastic and reticular fiber. This is a loose areolar connective tissue where we can see elastic fibers are seen, thin fibers, bundles are seen, collagen fibers and as we said reticular fibers is a network and it is not seen in HNE staining. Tabulated form to explain all the fibers in one slide. Collagen fibers, tendon, elastic fibers, ligamentum nuke, reticular fibers, basal lamina. Collagen fibers runs in bundles, elastic fibers run singly, reticular fibers form meshwork. Then physical properties, collagen fibers have high tensile strength, flexible but inelastic. Elastic fibers are highly elastic, little tensile strength. Reticular fibers have little elasticity and tensile strength. Another name is for collagen fibers it is white fibers, for elastic fibers it is yellow fibers and reticular fibers are known as agrochirophilic fibers. Ground substance, the formed elements of connective tissue, cells and fibers, these are fibers are present in a ground substance. So, ground substance is semi solid gel which is made up of water and carbohydrate and proteins. So, connective tissue we know it is cells and intercellular matrix that is fibers and ground substance. So, ground substance is semi solid gel. As we said ground substance is rich in proteoglycans. Proteoglycans are complexes that are formed by protein and Glycosoaminoglycans GAGs. Okay. This is a slide to show the uh, details about collagen fibers, type 1, type 3, elastin is ela uh, the details about the fibers, then ground substance if you want to know glycosaminoglycans, hyaluronic acid and proteoglycans. Classification of connective tissue. Now, the connective tissue is classified as embryonic that is mucoid connective tissue. Connective tissue proper this is further classified as loose connective tissue and dense. Loose is where the fibers are loosely arranged and dense is where the fibers are densely arranged. Dense connective tissue is further classified as regular and irregular. Regular is where the collagen fibers are packed densely and in an orderly manner. Whereas irregular where the collagen fibers are packed densely, but they are irregularly arranged. So, dense connective tissue which is regular is example is tendon, whereas a dense connective tissue which is irregular their example is a dermis of the skin. Then there is specialized connective tissue that is cartilage, bone and blood. Embryonic connective tissue or a mucoid tissue. So, Mesenchyme is an embryological tissue from which all the types of connective tissue are derived. Now, if you see the mesenchymal cells, they are irregular in shape, they can be star shaped or fusiform. They have very delicate branching cytoplasmic extensions, then there is a network of those branchings. 
the nuclei have dispersed chromatin and nucleoli present. Matrix constant, uh, consist of ground substance which is blue color stain and no mature fibers. This is a typical embryonic connective tissue. The example is the umbilical cord. So, where is this mucous connective tissue present? It is in the umbilical cord. This umbilical cord, if you can see, it is having the cells and Wharton's jelly. Now, Wharton's jelly, this is a gelatin like substance, and this substance is known as Wharton's jelly. It mostly consists of hyaluronic acid. And in the umbilical cord, you can see this two umbilical arteries, one umbilical vein. During the staining process, what happens is the Wharton's jelly gets removed. Hence, only spindle shaped cells are seen. Okay, so, this is a slide of umbilical cord example of mucous connective tissue. What we can see is the two umbilical arteries and one umbilical vein connective tissue consist here the mucous connective tissue consists of cells and Wharton's jelly. Wharton's jelly is gelatin like substance ground substance. It is mostly hyaluronic acid and during staining this Wharton's jelly get removed. So, only whatever dots we are seeing that is the cells spindle shaped cells with elongated nuclei are seen mesenchymal stem cells. Wharton's jelly, loose areolar tissue, loose areolar tissue it has got all the fibers collagen fibers, elastic fibers, reticular fibers. Cells are fibroblast, macrophages, plasma cells, fat cells present. Ground substance of course, the fibers and the cells are embedded in the gel like substance known as ground substance and this ground substance is washed away during staining. So, we can see empty spaces, if you can see this slide empty spaces are seen, empty spaces is areola and hence it is known as areolar tissue. It is present just beneath the epithelium, superficial fascia or if surrounding the blood vessel, this is all example of loose areolar tissue. It provides support. Second function is it provides a plane for movements and also it provides space for expansion of viscera. Adipose tissue, adipose tissue, fat tissue. This cells or the cytoplasm contains a single large lipid droplet and hence these cells are called as unilocular adipocytes. These cells we have seen it gives the appearance of signet ring because during processing or tissue processing or staining process the fat gets washed and only a thin cytoplasm is seen thin rim and a peripheral flat nucleus. So, a signet ring appearance. Adipose tissue is superficial fascia omentum mesentery. Function of this adipose tissue is to store energy protection of the viscera. So, this is all showing signet ring appearance empty cell thin ring of cytoplasm and nucleus is seen. And the sub, sub fat present in the superficial fascia is present throughout the body except over the eyelid, auricle, penis and the scrotum. And the subcutaneous, subcutaneous layer of fat is called as paniculus adiposus. Types of adipose tissue are yellow tissue and white adipose tissue. Yellow is adult type. This uh, fat is regarded as insulation against heat loss. For example, a warm blooded mammal whale, it can survive in cold water because it has got a very thick layer of subcutaneous fat and brown 
uh, adipose tissue is known as embryonic type. Again, here the fat in the cytoplasm is in the form of several droplets. So, brown fat is also known as multilocular adipose tissue. In this, the cytoplasm and the nucleus are not pushed to the periphery. And brown adipose tissue we know more in newborn, abundantly seen in the newborn, and then it is lost during the childhood. So, this is they are given the difference uh, yellow adipose tissue unilocular brown is multi nucleus is at the periphery in the yellow here it is round and not necessarily periphery cytoplasm is empty thin dream here the cytoplasm is proper foamy appearance yellow is adult type uh, brown is newborn and yellow adipose tissue is seen in the yellow bone marrow surrounding the viscera this is newborn Function is insulation, this is thermogenesis. Dense regular connective tissue, we said dense regular is the connective, this collagen fibers are dense and arranged regularly. This is predominantly type 1 collagen fiber. So, it has got more of collagen fibers and very few cells. The fibers are arranged in thick bundles, if you can see the slide looks like this and in between you can see here the nuclei of the fibroblast. So, example is tendon, tendon is an example of dense regular connective tissue. TS of tendon if you see it gives a typical flying bird appearance that is the uh, nuclei or the fibroblast we are seeing is pressed in between the fibers and that is why it is giving it the flying bird appearance. Dense irregular connective tissue means again collagen fibers are dense, but they are not regularly arranged and the example is dermis of the skin. It provides strength to the structure, its functioning function is to provide strength. Elastic tissue, elastic tissue has got more of elastic fibers if you can see here the elastic fibers thin elastic fibers they are wave like example is ligamentum nu k this slide is stained by a special stain that is verhoff stains which stains the elastic fibers black marfan syndrome due to abnormal development of elastic fibers the signs and symptoms are the people are tall they have long or they are long and thin arms and legs, very flexible joints, scleroderma again it is a slowly progressive rheumatic disease. It is characterized by deposition of fibrous tissue in the skin and that is the reason there is firmness of that area and the person is not able to of um, do easy movements, joint movements do not occur. So, the result the disease causes flexion deformity of the fingers, if you can see in this picture. The skin has become tight, that the fingers they curl and they lose their mobility. So, we said scleroderma is slowly progressive rheumatic disease characterized by deposition of fibrous tissue in the skin. Of course, it is an autoimmune disease of the connective tissue. Scurvy, deficiency of vitamin C, this causes defective collagen formation. So, the patient has got loose teeth and skin hemorrhages. There are many inherited diseases caused by mutations in the genes coding for type 1 and 3 collagen. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome is characterized by abnormality skin lacks and hypermobility of the joints. This is type 5 collagen disorder. Thank you.